Hey Wildcats, uh, this is our attempt, uh, you know, we're beating Corona tonight and I wanted to create something that we could, uh, you know, parents could look at and it, it wouldn't have to, you know, you didn't have to make the meet tonight, but you could look at it, you know, at your convenience. But this is kind of the, the top 10 tips that I've learned over the years for uh, getting your uh, getting your student athlete uh, recruited. And when I'm talking about recruiting, I'm talking about a, a paid scholarship. So we'll go down them. I got 10 of them. I got, I got two uh, don't waste your time ones. Let me go ahead and start with those combines uh combines are big business uh they do absolutely nothing they cost a lot of money uh most of the time and they do absolutely nothing to help you get uh recruited so don't waste money on uh combines don't waste money on uh like the big long camps you know the the three four day camps that cost 350 400 bucks don't waste your money on those those are really uh those are all uh, combines and those those bigger camps those are money makers those are not to help you get recruited and we'll talk about the kind of camp you need to go to there is one particular camp that you need to go to to get recruited but uh it's not the big dollar camps and then the other one the other question i get a lot is these uh like these recruiting companies that help you get recruited uh i say try them out uh if they're free don't don't invest a bunch of money in one of those companies uh you know your if your kid has uh these 10 things going for him he's going to get recruited he doesn't need an outside source uh helping him do it a lot of times those those kind of companies are just uh ride along and then they claim you know once your kid gets a scholarship that he would have gotten anyway way they come in and claim that they did something to help them when they really didn't so let's look at this thing real quick these are uh these are the top 10 things that uh you know i've been doing this a long time and these are the things that have made a difference so number one is your highlight and we're talking about your huddle highlight and really what your highlight is it's uh it's the proof that you are a great player so when we're talking about getting money i, I think anyone can can uh play college ball if they want to there is enough D3 places there's enough walk-on opportunities there's a, there's enough opportunities out there junior college and and prep schools there's 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 opportunities out there but when you're talking about having a college pay you to go to college there's no getting around it. You have to be a great player, and the highlight is what shows that. So, uh, you know, a great player is someone that has special size or special speed or special ability. Like it's obvious it jumps off the screen when you're when you're watching their highlight that they got something special going on. Uh, and, and it and it's this simple. Your your highlight gets your foot in the door. And basically everything else we talk about is what closes the door in your face. So the, the highlight is not a guarantee. There's lots of great, great, great athletes who are never gotten a chance to play in college because they messed up these next nine things coming at them. But the, the great highlight, being a great player, having special size, special speed, or special ability or skills, that's what opens the door for you and gives you a chance to get in there. And, uh, and that's where that, so that's number one. Number two is, you got to have a 40 time and I'm talking about more skilled players. I'm talking about linebackers, DBs, receivers, running backs, those kind of players. You got to have a 40 time. They're, they're not going to talk to a, a, you know, a guy who's a, a great kid, but he's a four, nine, 40 guy. They're, they're not going to give money to. They might invite you to come, uh, you know, walk on when school starts, but they're, they're not going to give you money. So, uh, four, six are better for skilled people, uh, which means to me, man, you got to be on a track team. You know, whether you're out there in the winter or the spring, uh, there's something magical, just like something magical happens when you get in the weight room, something magic happens when you get out there and start sprinting full speed against other people. And it doesn't matter whether you're winning or losing. All that matters is you're out there competing every day and running fast every day because that's going to make you faster and faster and faster. And you can talk to our guys who ran track last year and every one of them will tell you they're a lot faster now because of that time they 
placement out there last year. Uh, number three is grades. And look, again, there's, there's no way of getting around this. If you are serious about a college paying you money to come play football, you have to be an AB honor roll person and, you know, to get to a four year school. You know, there's, there's prep schools and there's junior colleges for guys who they got the skill, but they don't have the grades. Well, then they're going to have to go a different route. But if you want to get uh, get paid to go to a four-year school, you have to be a B honor roll. And and I'll put I, I put on the remind that I'll send I'll send a packet home with the kids, and uh, and it's something that we got posted up in the weight room already. And I'll I'll try to post it on on the comments in here so you can look at it. But if not, make sure on Tuesday they uh, they get a copy of it and bring it home. But there there's you know it's a slide and scale the higher your gpa the lower your test score has to be and uh and you're just you know you're pretending you're you're not being elite if you can't uh if you know if you got this dream of playing college ball then you got to put the work behind it and the work happens in practice the work happens in the weight room but more than anything the thing that stops the more elite athletes than anything is you got to put the work in in the classroom and an a b honor roll is the way you prove that when i ask kids how the grades are and they always say oh they're doing better well my next question is always are you a b honor roll because if you're serious about being a college football player, you're going to be an A B on roll person. You know you can't you can't go to Notre Dame, you can't go to Clemson without having uh, the grades behind you. Number four, and this is gigantic. This is probably the second highest thing that that slams the door in people's face is you have to have your test score. Now I'm not going to give you the number because it's on the chart that your that your uh, that your son will bring home to you on Tuesday. And, and it, it, for Division One, it's a sliding scale. For Division Two, it's a set number. But you have to have your test score and you have to have that done by the end of your junior year you can't wait till your senior season and uh and get that test score it's got to be in place it's got to be you know when, when they come in and talk to me i got to be able to say hey he's got the grades and he's got his test score already and then the, the doors of opportunity open up for you but when you're waiting on a test score then you're basically in a race for who's going to get their test score first because remember colleges are picking the very best players from each school and each school has at least one or two great players so you got to have all these extra things all these other things in place already in order to make it happen also remember you you get the super score those test scores you know so you might have you might do good on math one time and good on reading the next time well they take the best score from each of those and they put it together that's called a super score so make sure that you're taking the test multiple times make sure you're taking the ACT and the SAT for this reason reason you're you're gonna uh you're gonna feel more comfortable with one of those and i can't tell you which one you're gonna feel more you're gonna feel better about but one of those is gonna feel more comfortable to you and that's the one you're gonna do better on so you want to make sure you take take that one multiple times so make sure you take them both decide which one you like the best and then do it well coach i'm just not very good at at tests you know taking tests well that's fine you you got prep courses now you got uh you know i, I wouldn't spend money on a combine i wouldn't spend money on a, one of those 500 hundred dollar camps but I would spend money on a prep course. You know, I think we've got teachers at our school that are doing them right now after school, trying to get kids prepared to take these tests. But you can take them. You got prep courses online. You got prep courses that you go to live. A prep course will prep you to take the SAT or the ACT, whichever one you're preparing for. And you got this wonderful thing called YouTube, which, uh, you know, there's plenty. All you got to do is punch in prep course ACT or prep course SAT and guess what a free one is going to pop up that can help you get prepared or a little more prepared for that test so where there's a will there's a way man you got to have your grades and you got to have the test score if you if you're serious about being elite and playing college ball uh the next one now i told you the the long camps the 500 hundred dollar camps no no good don't don't waste your money on those but the one day camps are absolutely essential uh 
Uh, they happen during the summer. They typically, it's one day. Sometimes it's just a few hours, like three, four hours, this, this camp happens. They usually run between $30 and $60 per day. And a lot of places will not offer you if you have not gone to their camp because they want to be able to get their hands on you. They want to see you in competition. They want to run you through the drills. They want to see how you mesh with their staff. They want to put their hands on you before they spend, think about it, before they spend, what, what's a college education going to cost now? You know, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. So before they invest that money in you, they want to put their hands on you. So those one-day camps are, are essential. They're vital. You will not get an offer without doing the one day camps uh and uh and don't wait till your you know your, your your upcoming senior year you can do those things early you know sometimes they say uh seniors only but a lot of times you can start doing that when you're a sophomore or junior how do you think those guys get those five star uh you know five stars behind their name is they they go to those camps but it's the one day camp. That's the vital one. Don't go to those multiple day camps. Go to the one day camp. They're cheaper and that's when they are that's all they're there for is to decide whether they want to give you a scholarship. Uh the next one, uh, we're getting into the the smaller details now. The next one is you got to have a clean social media. Uh you know, every year uh, someone loses a scholarship. You know, we said talent gets you the door that you know opens the door for you. All the rest of the stuff slams the door in your face. If you got some kind of stupid BS on social media, you're not going to get a scholarship. And and I've seen all kinds of crazy crazy things. You know, on on social media, you got to have a clean social media. Social media will disqualify you if you if you're screwing around on there it it'll disqualify you so make sure it's clean make sure it's professional you are you are selling yourself uh you know you are you are presenting your image to the outside world on this thing uh you know you're not trying to get a date for the prom you're trying to get a a, a fifty thousand dollar college scholarship so make sure your your social media is clean number seven this is a huge one now i've I've never had a kid get a college scholarship uh where at some point the coach didn't close the door and say all right now tell me the truth what kind of kid is this? What kind of leader is he? What kind of, is he a good guy? And they, they just want, they want to hear it. And when, when your coaches can be raving fans, when they can tell you, you know, I'd like this kid as my son. I'd like this kid to marry my daughter. He's, he's that kind of kid that those are the kids that get the offers and, and they just don't ask the, the coaches, you know, they, they go through the front office before they get to me and they'll run into a vice principal. They'll run into the principal. They'll run into teachers and they ask those people about you. And you need Raven fans. You need people up there that uh, that are just in love with you and, and, and love the way that your work ethic and the way you carry yourself. They they you gotta have Raven fans because you don't know which one they're gonna ask. You don't know who they're gonna bump into at that front office. You don't know who they're gonna bump into as they're walking from the front office out to the field house to talk to me. You don't know who they're coming in contact with, but I promise you they're asking those people about you. They're going to say your name and they're going to listen to what those people say. So make sure you're treating those people right. Make sure you're being the elite person that you're capable of being because those people are going to get asked about you and you want them to rattle off how great you are. You don't want them to say, eh, you know, and tell, <laughs> tell bad things about you. All right. Number eight, this, this is, this is mandatory. I don't think it has to be the first thing that you do, but you got to get this done. I think you can't really go on an official visit until you get your clearinghouse done. And it's really not, it used to be called the NCAA clearinghouse. Nowadays, I think they really just call it the eligibility center, but you go to NCAA.org and you fill out the information there. There is a fee. Although you can, for economic reasons, you can get a waiver. Uh, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's very expensive. I should have looked it up, but I don't think it's very expensive. But you have to have that in place. You cannot receive a, uh, an offer if you don't have your uh, if you don't have your clearinghouse or eligibility center stuff done. All right, the next one. 
Number nine, this is your people skills. Look, you're you're uh, they're going to make you know they're going to have a lot of guys that are very very similar skill wise because they're picking the elite. They're picking the one or two best kids at each school. So a lot of times the difference between them offering you and or offering that kid at Clinton or that kid at uh, Jack Britt is your people skills. How do you come across to them when they come in the door? So that means, number one, how are you dressed? And, and here's the, the trick, and we've already experienced this a few times. We don't know what day they're coming usually. You know, sometimes they text me ahead of time and say, hey, I'm coming Tuesday. But I'll be honest, that, that's more rare. That's not the, the, the most common thing. The most common thing is they just show up. I get a call from the front office that says I got a visitor and they come down. So I can't tell you ahead of time they're coming. Sometimes they text me and say I'm going to be here next Wednesday. Sometimes they just show up. So how do you dress? How do you dress in school? What's your appearance like? Are you shaved? Is your hair cut? Uh, you know, are you neat? Are you neat? Uh, eye contact, you know, are you, uh, can you look him in the eye and talk to him like a, like a grown person? Are you a yes sir, no sir person? You know, that, that's, that, that, that old stuff goes a long way when you're dealing with someone that literally is getting ready to write a $50,000 check. You know, they want to know that, that you're, uh, that, that you, the little things are right with you. Uh, handshake, which we should all be great at because we, we had, we've, we've taught that. We've taught how to give a good business handshake. But make sure you shake their hand. Make sure you look them in the eye. Make sure you're yes or no, sir. Uh, next one, this be confident. Uh, you're talking about if you're an elite athlete, you're going to be confident, but don't be arrogant. You know, be confident, but be a good guy. You know, they, they got to come across, they got to they gotta have a good feel about you. They got to like you when they meet you. So make sure, you know, the little thing, how you dress, how are you clean shaven, are you making eye contact, are you yes or no, sir, or a good handshake, are you confident, but you come across as a good guy. And then the last one is respect each opportunity and respect each coach. So you know, we all, you know, I, when I was in high school, I, I wanted to get recruited by the University of Georgia. The only problem is the University of Georgia didn't want to recruit me. So uh, you, we all have our dream school. And when that dream school walks in the door, man, fantastic. Let's let's uh, let's let's shake hands and, and give our best opportunity to, to show what we're made out of. But the the bottom line is and this is where parents got to jump in there and amen it is uh college free is what's important you know it uh it might not be clemson it might not be nc state it might not be unc but if they're going to pay you fifty thousand dollars and give you a free education and you get to play football every saturday that's a good deal so don't disrespect them just because they're from a smaller school don't disrespect don't big dog a coach because that, that coach might be the only offer you get. You know, come, come signing day, there might only be one offer from Vail State or, or from UNCP. And, uh, and all of a sudden, that offer is going to be a big deal to you. So make sure, treat every one of them like they're a big deal. Show them all the respect. Treat it and, and treat each one, treat each opportunity with respect because that might be the place you're spending the next four or five years. All right, and then the last one is just the one, and you know this one of our core principles, is just the toughness. You know that uh, things, things don't always go your way, and uh, you don't always get your dream school. Uh, don't, don't take the first no as uh, that's, that's the way it is. You know, be tough. Uh, some, sometimes it's going to be a don't, don't take no for an answer. Sometimes it means you're going to go to a different school. Sometimes it means you might have to walk on and prove it for a year, and then you'll get a full scholarship the next year. But the biggest thing is don't let anyone smash your dreams. You know, that's your dream, and it's an important dream, and you're worth that dream. So, uh, you know, don't be emotionally or mentally weak just because someone doesn't give you what you want. Uh, there's, lots of, there's lots of fish in the ocean, and, uh, and maybe, you know, God didn't want you. That, you know, God has a different plan for you. So be tough. Be, uh, you know, have, have some perseverance to you and, uh, and, and, uh, keep moving forward because your dream is worth fighting for. So that, so that's my big 10. Uh, remember, uh, you know, don't pay for those combines. 
Don't pay for them high dollar camps. Those one day camps are the deal. Uh, if, if you got one of those uh, places that can uh, can assist you in your recruiting process, make sure they're free because there's a bunch of them that are free and they're just as good as the other ones are. So uh, that's the Big Ten. I'll, I'll try to post those two charts. One is uh, uh, the sliding scale for SAT and one of them is uh, the core classes that are required. Uh, so that's it. Thanks, Wildcats, and uh, and I'll see you on Tuesday to give out those packages.